Okay, so I'm <clears throat> back here in the shed with the uh, with the planter, and uh, uh, I did a calibration on it last night, and uh, I don't think I did any video on that, so uh, I'm not going to uh, do it right now because I've already done it. But uh, I was going to go over a few little things uh, of it. It's it's really simple. Uh, so you just seen me do my uh, dry run test kind of with, with some seed on the ground and uh, counted them. So I did make an adjustment to my um, uh, seed uh, meter brush that per that sticker right there. So in my calibration, I'd played with it between uh, that, that top center one is a, uh, I know you can't see it, but uh, the top center one right there is a three, and this one over here to the right is a two. I had it on two when I did the dry run, but that little chart is made to put your seed on it and actually compare it to your seed. So number three was actually the closest to all the average sizes of my seed. Uh, there is half stuff notches in between there, so there's like a two and a half and a three and a half. But that little lever right up in there, I uh, I adjusted back to three, so that's where I'm gonna lay, leave it because that seems to be the best spot for it. But um, so pretty much, um, I've got seed in the boxes from last night. So there's the corn seed, and that is the. Uh, uh decab seed uh so i've just put enough in there to uh, get to the fingers in there that pick up the seed and uh i had my little drives in here i've got them in the disconnected position right now so if i can get my finger up in here there's two little uh arms let me just put them in the so I flipped them over there. They're hitting the chain drive just a hair. But uh, let me turn this slightly. But uh, anyway, as you can see, these little fingers come in contact with the chain drive there, and that's what drives your uh, seed meter. So there's a uh, neat little feature here where you can uh, lock these out. And you can do some dry runs with the planter without actually putting out seed. I really like that. That is a that's a great little feature I like right there. I didn't realize uh, that it would be that way, but uh, it's really neat. Uh, it's called a flex coupler or something like that. That little device is. But uh, anyway, that's pretty neat. But anyway, with it connected, seed in the box, uh, you take the drive tire here which drives the uh, planter and, and all the mechanisms here and all the chain drives so drives your your per se gearbox or set sprockets over here then that shaft comes back over here and drives this chain which then in turn comes down here and drives your meter on the bottom of your hopper so anyway i'm disconnected right now but the way you calibrate it uh you get this thing off the ground a little bit i've got it too high right now actually well, it depends on how big of a pan or cup or bucket say you put down here under your opener but you have to catch the seed of course you have to prime it i call it first so pretty much you put some seed in there put you a pan under there each one to catch them and uh, rotate this well several times and make sure you got a steady count of seed. That gives the fingers all time to pick up seed. And then you basically mark a point on your tire. And I was using this B right here. That's Big's <laughs> uh, name. But uh, I was using this and eyeballing it right straight down here. Uh, but basically, once you get it primed and everything, put some empty uh containers under there to catch the seed under the openers and you turn this wheel two times so just turn this wheel two revolutions and um then you take your seed out and count them 
And I was counting anywhere from like 26 to 29, 28. 28 seed was what I was looking for. The calculation is the number 180 divided by the number of seeds you count. And the number you get is the inches or spacing between the seed. So I was looking for about 6.4 to 6.5 inches. And I was ranging with my numbers anywhere from a low 6 to a 7, somewhere in there. So that's where I needed to be. So the calibration worked out great using that method. And it's a lot easier than, than doing a seed drill. Um, and that's it. It's, it's just, just nothing to it. And I did several runs. I took an average of my runs and kind of looked at where I was. So... I think for where I'm at here, I've got, as far as the seed rate goes, as good as I can get it uh, from, from what I can tell. The only other thing I could do would be to change my drive sprockets here. And that's either going to put me too high or too low. So uh, that's, the best, uh, that's the best combination to run for the rate that I'm looking for. And uh, according to the math and, and what I've measured out there on the ground while ago, uh, which I'd like to run that again, it just, it's sunny right now, but the little showers keep going by and from when we get out there and we seed and it's going to start raining on me. But uh, I may make another run here in a little bit. Uh, I am about to take it back out and uh, I'm going to carry it out in the pasture and... Uh, try to get i've got it leveled uh so i've got a bit of an angle issue with the tractor uh this point right here needs to be a little bit higher i think uh so that this thing would raise up level it's not raising up level on me i've actually the tractor's pointed front end down a little bit right now but uh those ghost wheels get real close to the ground with it picked all the way up so I'm going to have to adjust it one way to transport it and adjust it back to level when I get to the field, unfortunately. Uh, and I hope I don't run any issue with my drag chain on that. Uh, the only other thing that would help it would be a quick hitch, I think, because all the quick hitch hitches I've looked at, uh, the top hook part is down lower than where your top link pins up higher. And I believe that would put me in a position where it would raise it up and down more level. But uh, I just don't have one. And they're around 300 bucks plus for a cat too. So uh, it's just going to have to hold right now. But uh, anyway, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm going to... I'm sure he's, he's already... All the chains and everything are old. Uh, I'm going to probably just lightly touch all the grease points that I see. Again, just to make sure they're greased well. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is put water. Actually, I guess I'll go ahead and do that right now is get water in this tank because, uh, like I said, the next adjustments I'm looking to make when I get out in the pasture are uh, just seeing how deep I can get things to go, looking at where my no-till coulter is in relation to my opener, and my row cleaners. I want my row cleaners... I don't want them digging, I don't think, but I want them just where they're clearing that surface. Uh, so just scratching away the stuff at the top of the ground. So the field's dead, but it had some some grass in it. Uh, it's real fine grass. It wouldn't, I wouldn't say overly thick, but uh, I'm gonna need that cleared out of the way. And I'm hoping I don't run into an issue with these spike tooth closers on that. I hope they don't get caught up in that stuff and it tries to wrap around it. I don't think it's tall enough that it will. I think it'll just mash it, mash it flat. And like I just said, it was sunny out and I think I'm starting to hear raindrops here on the shed. <laughs> so it's just, oh, it's been crazy the past couple of days. It's just been these little drizzles here and there. They come and they go and it's about as soon as they come, they're gone. I don't know. It's like summertime weather. And it's April, early April. But anyway, uh, so I'm going to probably wrap this video up. Uh, one thing I will be looking at here, and I did some research on this, and Mr. Biggs uh, explained this to me. Um, and with my seed drills, 
I always wanted this no-till coulter running, and I, I thought, and maybe for a seed drilling with beans, it's the rule of thumb, but you wanted it going as deep as your opener or up to an inch deeper than your opener. Uh, but in this case, I don't want that. Uh, and he brought it to my attention, and I did some more research on my own. Uh, and I actually found a video out there of somebody setting up. I don't know if it was this exact John Deere drill, but it, there's several, not drill, planter, several planters that use this very similar setup. But um, the rule of thumb uh, was to have this coulter running about a quarter inch higher than the bottom of your uh opener disc and the reason for that is with corn and especially even more since i'm running the seed firmer back here is if this runs any deeper of course it's loosening that ground up deeper they it causes what they called a false seed bed so basically instead of getting a uniform depth uh, the seed has the potential to go deeper than your opener and even your seed firmer has the ability to push it down into that softer just till dirt so i want this thing running sh just shallower than my opener disc so i'm gonna take it back out there uh I, the method i seen the video i seen which i thought was pretty good they got everything level and they actually put a level under here and let it touch the bottom of the opener and then they measured about a quarter inch gap between that level board or level whatever you use and that means you got this about right so i want to see where this falls oh uh, i don't want to have to make an adjustment to it because the adjustment looks like it's almost about a half inch it might be less than that but it's a pretty good adjustment uh, so I'm going to see where that's setting and then get some water in it, get some weight and, uh, see if I can't get the, uh, get the openers and the no-till coulter down a little bit where I can gauge about where my, uh, row cleaner needs to be and get that set approximately. So at that point, my hope is it'll be ready to go to the field, uh, pretty much so um and the way things are looking it's going to be the next day or two and i hope to plan it all in one day it's going to be a long day but i hope to plan it all in one day but uh anyway uh thanks for watching uh, i hope these were informative uh because if you like these planners go check out uh, bigs farm equipment uh, look them up online and on youtube and uh he'll be glad to hook you up with one of these or build your own custom one however you want it he's got several different options on that but anyway thanks for watching see ya